Hello everybody and welcome back and this video is about fretboard theory and we're gonna kind of pick up where we left off and if you haven't seen the first few videos please check them out especially the two that are marked did you know this about your fretboard and that explains how I broke down the fretboard and it, it's not complicated it's just a couple of things that I do with the fretboard that helped me get where I am today um, and I came up with this on my third attempt to learn the guitar at uh, over 50 years old and the first two failed miserably and I just couldn't understand the way it was the way I was learning it it just didn't make sense so I kind of came up with this and this is what I've, I've been sharing with you uh, through these many videos here on YouTube and other platforms as well um, so please take a look at those videos because it sort of sets the groundwork for how to, you know, how to approach things from there. Okay. So today what we're going to do is we're going to find out how we can identify the key note or the key of a song, definitely the key note, um, from a progression or a song that we want to play along with or we're listening to the radio, um, we want to play along or pick out, you know, little riffs or just add a little accoutrement to whatever's playing. It could be a live person. You're at an open jam. Um, they're, they've been jamming a little bit. You don't want to say, hey, what key are you in? We're going to figure that out ourselves. All right. So what I did earlier today was I put a two chord progression on my looper. Now, I've honestly kind of forgotten. I've done a lot of things today. I was practicing for some other stuff and, and I, I can't remember what that was. So we're going to learn together and we're going to identify that chord progression together. Okay, so if you remember the first things that I kind of said about taking the next step way back was I, I sort of said that suggested you learn the notes on the fifth and sixth string. That's these two strings here. Because after you've built your guitar foundation, right, and, and, you've, and you're playing your chords and you're, you're, you're creating songs and learning songs, everything you do after that, every technique you want to add, bar chords, power chords, solos, so scales, um, all kinds of stuff, different genres of playing, are all going to revolve around, you know, the notes off those two strings. So it really helps if you learn them. And today, we're going to use those two notes to identify the key notes in a chord progression, all right? So let's start the progression, and I'll show you how I zero in on the notes, all right? So... First thing I do is I'll pick a string, and I'm going to take that A string and start playing it, right? And I'm listening for harmonic, like a harmonic fusion that sounds good. Now you can tell these notes aren't fitting in. We're getting closer there. There. Hear that? So that's what we're listening for harmonically, is a note that kind of blends in with the progression or the song that we're listening to. So I'm very confident to say that is a key note right there. Doesn't necessarily again mean that the key of the song is E, but that's definitely a note that works. Now, that's all I really need to be able to creatively add something to a progression, a jam, a song that's playing, whether it's your buddy or it's a professional artist. Okay, that's all I need is that one note, right? So, what I'm going to do from here, now I've identified my note, okay? So what I'm going to do from here is I want to build a four note box. Okay? So how do I find the next notes? Well, the first thing I do is I either go up two frets or down two frets and see if the note before and after work well as well. All right? So we're going to start the chord progression. Okay? So I've got my E, right? We know that works. Now I'm going to go down to the D. Alright, so 
you can probably tell the D, I mean, when I go down from E to D, it's, it's okay, but it's not. And if I go up, it's really because I'm sliding up into that note, to the good note, that it sounds okay. But the D, in my opinion, doesn't really belong there at this point, okay? So we're gonna go up. Let's play it again. Now that's an F sharp right there. And that sounds not bad, okay? If I just go back and forth, like toggle back and forth. That's not bad. So we're gonna keep that note. We're gonna go E to F sharp. So there's our first two notes of our four note box. So where do we get the other notes? Well, there's a couple of places, but remember the theory in the video was anywhere in the same colored strings, the notes are always the same under each other. So we know that if we have an E here, this has to be an A. So without even thinking about it, I know E and A. And then of course, if we go up two frets from the A, we have a B, right? Because that's standard theory. So now I have E, F sharp, A, and B. So really all we had to do was find that one note and the other three just fell into place really quick, right? So let's test them against our progression. Sounded pretty good. Now, if I just did that, okay, while he's playing that chord progression and everyone's jamming or the song is playing on the radio, I'm gonna sound okay. I'm not gonna sound like the song because you'd have to know the exact riff to play if you wanna replicate, right? Obviously. We're talking about a jam situation or just a practice situation where you want music to play and you wanna just pick out notes to practice, which you will eventually down the road wanna do. So those four notes sounded pretty good. Let's just do it one more time. So we start at our E. All right. Now, yes, we're limited. We, we've got four notes, but we can play those four notes any way we want, and they'll fit in nicely with what's playing. But if we try to listen to the progression or the fellow that's playing or the girl, and we try to match our landing notes. So when we start, when they're playing an E, if we pluck an E, that'll sound great. And then we can sort of go off and come back to that E when it comes back, right? Or if you want to key on the A, do that. So every time the A comes back, we're hitting the A note. It really helps make you sound that much better. But remember, you don't have to. Those four notes, as you've heard already, are going to fit just fine. All right, so let's take a quick recap of what we've done so far today. Is we've listened to a chord progression, all right, and we've used a noodling method along one of these two strings, okay, to identify find a key note match that we hear in our ear goes, hey, that sounds great together. We took that note and we used that to build a four note box, which all sound good. Sometimes we have to experiment very quickly. We've got to go back two frets, uh, doesn't sound right. Up two frets, that sounds good in our case, okay? Um, but once we find those four notes, we can comfortably play any of those notes in any order right? And they will sound great. Now, you're also wondering, well, boy, that took a while. Yeah, it did. Um, and it's going to take you a while for a, a while, okay? Until you have done this a lot and you start automatically zeroing in when you hear something, you have an idea that it's going to come from this part of the board. So you start noodling where you think that you know, because you're developing an ear, right? And you don't have that yet. We're coming off of learning and playing chords. Uh, now we're into individual notes. Now the pros go through the exact same process as you do. 
What key is it in? Let me find the key notes and let me build upon those key notes. The only difference between you and them is they do it in a split second because they have that experience, the, the knowledge, the confidence, they have everything, okay? You don't have that yet. So they go through the same thing. They just do it quicker, all right? So what we're gonna do next lesson or next video, we're gonna pick up where we stopped on this uh, four note box and we're gonna expand the box so we have even more creativity to add to a song. And then in videos down the road, we're gonna turn, start turning that into more of a solo, okay? And we're gonna easily play these little shapes that we create, we're gonna play them all over the place and show you how to do that. And it's really, really easy. But it does require that you start thinking of note retention, okay? Start thinking of the notes that you're playing, that you're, you know, in your little four box of notes. Like, start thinking of that. Just like you do with your chords, okay? When you're playing, you know you're playing a C chord. I gotta go to a D. I'm playing a D. I gotta go to a G. I'm playing a G. Like, it's in your mind. You know what you're doing. We have to start thinking that way with notes as well. All right? So I'm gonna leave you with this. I hope that that makes a little sense, but as always, I'm here to answer any questions you have. If you're a first timer, check out my back catalog. If you think I can help you um, learn or pick up the guitar um, in an easy way, as, as quickly as possible, absolutely, hit subscribe. I post videos pretty much every day or every other day, and there's always something interesting for all levels from absolute beginner up to intermediate. All right, thanks and have a good day and happy practicing.